Hey everybody, it's the Razman with another edition of Razman's Reality. Sorry that there was no show yesterday, but I did explain that in the last video that there would be a possibility that there wasn't one, so if you missed out as to why, you're gonna either watch the last blog or find out here in a minute. Gotta start off today with the reason that I figured there would be a delay and that of course is the Daytona 500 the Daytona 500 was yesterday ended up being race shortened a rain shortened race excuse me got a little tongue tied there with those two R's in a row but it ended up being a rain shortened race I believe it was lap 60 to go or lap 50 to go somewhere around there that the race was called and your winner a man who did not win at all in 2008 but enters the winner's circle in the very first race in 2009 the biggest race of them all Matt Kenseth the 17 gets credit for the Daytona 500 win and ironically as long as Jack Roush has been in NASCAR, that was his first ever victory at the Daytona 500. Not the Daytona track itself, but in the big race, the 500. That was Jack Rouse's first win. So, didn't really want to see it go down that way as far as it being a race shortened victory. But I'm kind of glad that Matt Kenseth and Jack Rouse got that victory because of how hard that organization has been committed to the sport. The thing that I hated the most, and for those of you that know me personally, you know where I'm about to go with this, is the actions or reactions of one Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is my favorite driver. He was involved with an incident after getting a lap down due to problem on pit road problems, plural, on pit road. He was involved in an incident with the Red Bull, Bull Toyota of Brian Vickers. And what happened between those two is they were both trying to race for what is known as the lucky dog. And that is the first car that is one lap down and gets a free pass and gets to get back on the lead lap and, and contend for the win. Well, the 88 was racing Vickers for that spot and Vickers put a very aggressive block onto Junior and in doing so almost forced Junior back down below the L line. The reason that Vickers was trying to block Junior is because Junior had a major major run on him. Now some people say it was Junior's fault some people say it was Vickers' fault, but what happened as a result of all this was Junior had to turn himself back up onto the track. Because if you're below the yellow line, which is actually now a double yellow line in Daytona, you get disqualified. So, in order to prevent himself from being disqualified, Junior turns back up onto the track and gets into Vickers, which causes Excuse me, fans, I hate to do this in the middle of a lot, but apparently my sinus drainage is making me cough. Hold on one second. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that, but proof that this is a live show and this comes right from my brain. If you wanted to criticize me for anything, don't let it be criticized that I don't research and think about what I'm going to talk about before I say it. Nonetheless, the incident caused Junior to get into the back of Vickers after he tried to get back on the track and prevent himself from being disqualified. Now, Junior's version is the one I told, but if you listen to some of the other drivers, Vickers in particular, the, the, he says, 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 man, I don't know where that came from. Again, live show. <laughs> but he says that Junior actually took out the entire field, and that was actually my father's opinion, but my father is not a NASCAR fan, so 
I tend to believe Junior not just because I'm a Junior fan, but because Junior has the reputation of being a truthful driver. When he messes up on the track, he admits it. So I happen to believe that his version is actually what happened. But anyway, as a result of that, he did not win. A lot of good cars, including, and boy, I hate saying this, the 18 of Kyle Busch, were all taken out of contention. So it made for a very interesting ending with the rain, and I personally don't believe that the 17 of Kansas would have won the race had it not been for this incident. And I also know one other thing that my father would be $200 richer today if Dale Earnhardt Jr. had won because he randomly received Dale Jr.'s name in a NASCAR pool that he paid $5 to participate in with a bunch of his business buddies. So, he would have been $200 richer had Jr. won, which was more incentive for me to want to see the 88 in victory lane. It didn't happen. Real quickly, before we get into No Way Out, if you're looking at the page and you're wondering, okay, well, why am I seeing Razman's reality number 39, I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken. Why am I seeing Razman's reality number 39, and then I'm seeing two other videos after that, or at least one other video after that? Well, the reason for that is that today is going to mark the debut of something I've been teasing, and something I'm going to go ahead and attempt to try and see how well it's received, and that's speciality shows. I'm going to do one, possibly even two or three, depending on how long it takes videos on a Blu-ray review of my latest Blu-ray. I'm going to spend the entire ten minutes discussing that movie. And it's simply going to be entitled The Name That You'll See on the video. I'm not going to spoil the video for those of you that didn't watch it first or don't know what it is. I'm not going to tell you what Blu-ray I'm going to be reviewing, but that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, no way out last night. The matches went every way that you would expect them to. HBK gets the victory over JBL, so HBK is quote-unquote free from employment from JBL. That whole storyline is over. He's financially secure. All of that. Jack Swagger retains the ECW title in a one-on-one -on -one match against Finley. Look for Captain Charisma Christian to take that title very, very soon, if not this coming Tuesday on ECW. You heard it here first. And the Elimination Chambers were the ones that were really interesting. WWE Championship Elimination Chamber from SmackDown saw Triple H become your new WWE Champion. I believe this is his 14th title reign, if I'm not mistaken. It's either his 13th or 14th reign as Champion. And then it came time for the Raw World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Chamber match. Kofi Kingston attacked backstage so he cannot compete who takes his spot but none other than Edge the man who was the WWE champion on Smackdown if you ask me it's going to come out that Edge actually attacked Kofi but nonetheless and I'm saying that because I actually missed this pay-per-view I didn't get to see the pay-per-view and the results of the pay-per-view aren't very clear as far as the written ones. But, anyway, Edge finds his way into the Raw Elimination Chamber match and actually becomes your new World Heavyweight Champion. So what happens now? You've got Edge as Raw's champion, but he's a part of SmackDown's roster, and you've got Triple H as SmackDown's new champion. So which of those two champions will switch shows? Do they move the draft up before WrestleMania now to try to get around this problem? Or as Edge, surprisingly enough, left his wife behind as the general manager of SmackDown and will now be going to Monday Night Raw? Well, I'll just have to tune in to Raw tonight to find out. 
the NBA All-Star Game also over the weekend.